Hello everyone. Today I was going to be talking about a phone, but I thought, you know what, why don't I just switch it up a little bit. Um, and seeing as um, I've had quite a lot of new subscribers lately, um, I thought it might be a good idea to talk about some of the cell phone technologies um, out there uh, from from back in the day as well as currently. Um, and certainly um, some, of the, some, some people have been asking about what works with what and what works with where, you know, which country and, and all that. So um, I thought it might be a good idea to run through uh, some, some of the technologies out there and, and give you a little bit of an insight into, uh, into some of the stuff. So anyway, um, I've taken the liberty of doodling on a little bit of paper. Uh, that's part of the world. That's a slightly better part of the world. Uh, as you can clearly see, my drawing is appalling, uh, so apologies. Um, but North America, South America, Africa, a little bit shaped, uh, Europe, Scandinavia, or Asia, and all sorts of other stuff, um, and uh, Japan. And obviously Australia is down here, which I haven't drawn yet for a particular reason. Um, so I was going to talk you guys through, um, first off, um, a lot of people say, oh, yeah, 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 bands, bands, bands. And I'm not talking about the musical bands, you know, it's not like, but, you know, we're not talking about the, the local, the local uh, wine joint with the, with the local, local celebrities, wannabe bands and stuff. We're talking about frequency bands. Uh, and there's a lot of frequency bands out there. Um, for the majority of the world, uh, the, the, the world's kind of divided up into different segments. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just do a little bit on here. Um, so why don't I tilt the camera forward a little bit like so now so if we split the world into a couple of sections so basically Americas uh, and then you got pretty much everything else with the exception of maybe Japan and a, a couple of places sort of Korea sort of um, so we'll talk about that in a sec now um, when cell phone technology first came out, obviously the governments had to work out what frequency it was going to go on and everything, um, and uh, what was available. Because obviously you got TV signals, you got cable signals, you got all sorts of other signals, which uh, which probably not many people, you know, ambulance, police, you know, uh, military, airplane traffic, uh, radio, all sorts of stuff. So and it obviously all needs to be divvied up into frequencies. Now. Um, for the majority part uh, in the world, when, when cell phones first started, they picked um, about 450 megahertz um, and about 850 megahertz. Um, now, amps, which is one of the older technologies, which is uh, which is an analog type system, uh, it was a successor to IMTS. I'm not going to talk about IMTS because that's way, 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 way um, out of my, my depth. Uh, and I don't have a single IMTS phone in my collection. Actually, no, I think I have one. Um, but, I mean, this is going back sort of, you know, 70s where, where they had, you know, phones in, in car boots. But... Um, Let's talk about when 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 cell phones really took off and, and the portables. So so when when apps first took off um, and and when all these Dynatax came out. Previous to, to obviously all this sort of stuff, they had IMTS systems, um, but they were you know big 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 things, probably as big as this desk um, in the in the trunk or boots of cars. So that's not really mobile. But anyway, so frequency bands we're talking about 800 uh, megahertz, 900. Um, uh, 1800, 2100, uh, and now obviously 2600. So just to give you a quick rundown, you got um, amps which operated on, on 800 megahertz, give or take, um, and then you had obviously um, uh, GSM. Now, previous to GSM, they obviously had ETAX or TAX. Now, looking at the map, basically, when, when the countries decided what technology they were going to go for, the Americas decided we're going to go with amps because that's what Motorola was kind of pushing uh, and, and they kind of invented it. So they went with amps. So pretty much all of Northern America went with amps. Uh, Southern America, I think, sort of followed later. but And then Europe just decided we're going to go with just different analog technologies. Now... Um, I got to hand it to them. Um, Ericsson were, I think, the very first uh, cellular or network infrastructure provider. Um, and I think the very first network which ever existed was actually in Saudi. Uh, not what people think, is, you know, in, in Sweden. I think that Saudis the, the, hired the, the Swedish guys, Ericsson, to build the network uh, first. 
uh, in their country. So, um, but but uh, Ericsson, we're we're at the forefront of um, of building out um, analog systems. Now, um, they devised a system with with uh, Norway and Sweden and Denmark called NMT, Nordic Mobile Telephone Systems, um, and NMT sort of developed from there. Now, a lot of European countries thought, yeah, we like the sound of that because you could take a phone from Sweden and use it in Norway or Denmark. Um, and that meant uh, f sort of it was good for business, you know. So um, but unfortunately, a lot of the networks in Europe at the time were uh, in, the, in their own countries. So you obviously had Germany with their CNET. Um, I, I don't know what they had in Switzerland, possibly also some variant of that in Austria as well. In France, they had Radiocom 2000, which was just in its own sense, a different uh, technology. Um, they, they had a few other networks. Um, the UK went with tax. I think Italy also had tax at one point or another. Um, not too sure about some of the other countries, but it was kind of a, a, a mixed bag of everybody was kind of doing their own thing. Um, and then back in sort of, I think it was late 80s, they just decided, you know what, why don't we all get together and standardize a format? Um, and that's how, that's how GSM uh, kind of, uh, that's how GSM kind of appeared. Uh, uh, I don't know what this thing stands for. I think Global System for Mobile Telecommunications or something like that. Anyway, so they, they sort of fixed the GSM system and standard. And then everybody uh, in Europe uh, kind of bought into the idea. Uh, and soon, pretty much the rest of the world kind of followed, with the exception of America and a couple of exceptions out here. Um, Japan, uh, Korea, I think, was one of them. Uh, but Japan was always at the forefront. Uh, they were doing mobile phone stuff long before, you know, anybody else. So they were kind of in, in, in a league of their own. So, um, and, and I took the liberty of, of digging out some of, some of the old phones of my collection uh, just to show you guys what I mean. Um, this is a Microtac 2. Uh, Japan did their own thing when it came to analog. They had something called JTAC, which is very similar to ETAX, but just their version of it. Now, getting phones out of Japan that are this old, trust me, I would rather be drawing or sucking blood up out of stone because it's just so difficult. The language barrier for one, and people, ju they just don't want to send outside of Japan. So, But I have this, and I have a 9800X as well, which is... Uh, for JTAC, I just uh, haven't got around to digging it out. This is um, uh, got all sorts of um, Japanese or Korean on the back of it. Uh, so this is definitely out of Korea and Japan. Um, and, and this does power on. This definitely does power on. Um, so they had JTAC um, out there, which was their own their own little version of, of, of analog. But anyway, um, and then obviously you had the guys in, in, in Scandinavia, which had NMT. Um, and, uh, and Motorola obviously made special versions of phones for these guys um, and, uh, and, and made uh, NMT variants of, of the, the, the phones that they did for everywhere else. So a good example of, is this. This is a Motorola Microtech Classic. Um, looks pretty much normal, but this is a TVD. Uh, so this is definitely for NMT. Um, when I say TVD, I mean F09 TVD. Uh, this is the same phone. Uh, this is the classic as well, but this is for E-Tax, and this is an F09 SQD. So, um, same phone. This is for e for tax at the time. This was for NMT. Um, you guys get the idea. You know, phone manufacturers were making different phones or different variants of phones for different areas uh, around the world. So. Um, and obviously, America decided to go with amps. Some European countries decided to go with an analog, different systems. Uh, and there was many different um, variants. I just happened to pick this up. This is a flare. It doesn't have a card slot down there, which means it's not GSM. This is, in fact, uh, tax, I think. This is, yeah, this is definitely tax. Uh, so this is from the old analog days. Uh, they did, obviously, versions of this um, for GSM as well, which came out later. This is just a regular old flare. They're about as common as, I don't know what, but... Um, so anyway, so going back to the NMT then, uh, Scandinavia obviously had their NMT systems and they worked together, you know, from one country to the next. This is a Microtac 2. This is the LCD version of, of that phone there. This is also a, a TVD. So this is NMT. In fact, it's got the, got the, some sort of sticker there. I don't know if you guys can read that. Um, 
probably some some foreign language I don't speak but anyway yeah you, you guys get the idea um, and, and then obviously um, you know technology moved forward and, and certainly um, GSM launched I think it was 91 uh, certainly by by 92 92 late 92 I had a, a GSM phone no I think it was early 93 I had a GSM phone uh, but it was available I, to buy, I think it was late 92 where I was at the time. But I think GSM launched in 1991. So um, obviously previous to that, uh, in the UK, you had things like this. This is just another regular old tax. Notice there's no letters on the buttons either. I dug this out just to show you guys because nowadays, um, you know, phones without letters on, on the buttons is, I mean, that's unheard of. Um, so so um but th th this was for tax um and obviously british telecom did their own version um you guys have probably seen this phone before in some of my other videos this is a real nice example of a, of a tax phone uh this one is i mean this is immaculate it's got a really nice sandpaper feel to it there's no scratches or anything on it um all of these work by the way i'm not going to power every single one of them on but but you guys get the idea um so while while um while american was using amps um they sort of decided, okay, we need to increase capacity. What can we do? AMPS is obviously analog, um, and uh, NMT is analog, uh, ETAX is analog, uh, JTAC is analog. So things started going, okay, we're going to run out of capacity soon. So they went, you know, digital. Uh, the Americas then went, I think, with TDMA first, um, which um, I think was this phone here. This is a, um, a digital edge, um, micro digital. Um, it's different to all the other microscopes just because of the way the keypad layout is and you got the, the recall store and clear on the right. Check out the video about this phone I made um, about a year or so ago. Uh, real neat phones these but really big. Um, so um, and obviously that was also analog um, and then uh, the Americans then thought well why don't we start marketing things clever a little bit calling things digital so they launched tdma then there was cdma which you know cdma still exists uh, it's a it's a real good format it's real good technology um but um the, the tdmas uh, uh this operator on a tdma this is uh digital light uh it's not that tdma isn't um, it's not digital they just marketed it really clever because they wanted people to think it was and to a certain extent there are elements to it which are kind of digital but it's still considered an analog technology because it's not secure so um, but anyway and then you had obviously countries like uh, you know in, in Europe like like Austria and, and whatnot um, and they they had their own their own versions of, of these two phones for example this here is a Microtac 2 Motronic um, again, this one appears, I think, in my other video. I got a couple of these, actually. Um, and then um, America decided, okay, well, we're going to need to increase capacity. So they went to CDMA and TDMA, and they launched a couple of these phones. These are quite rare as well, because this has got the really funky curve there. Uh, this is an SC725. I've got a 735 as well, which looks like this. This is just gray. Um, or actually, it might that, I might have the wrong way around, actually. I think this is a 735. This 725 is is uh, is gray um and, and these operated on um on i think cdma um real rare phones these you don't see many of those around and they had this as well this was the 8200 not the international 8200 just the motorola 8200 this was for uh, cdma i believe um i really don't have much info at all about this and that the labels have all been peeled off unfortunately so there really isn't anything to go on but um Definitely, I remember seeing these phones uh, when uh, when TDMA and CDMA was was around. So I know these are analog. Um, so with time, obviously, countries realized they're going to run out of capacity, and that's where GSM really kicked in. Uh, it was marketed as a digital technology, which obviously it is, and it's secure. So um, a lot of people realized that was really the the, the 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 technology to go for at the time. So some countries in Africa didn't even have analog uh, systems uh, so they went straight to GSM I know certainly some countries when Europe got rid of the analog stuff and built GSM some of the African countries went out and bought the second-hand analog cell towers from Europe um, and then they they realized after about a year that that really wasn't a good investment and they obviously all went GSM as well so um, but uh, certainly when GSM started, um, it started as GSM 900, which is obviously um, 
the, the frequency 900 and that's considered well 1g or possibly 2g i i refer to it as 1g because 0g was analog for me uh, and 1g was gsm 900 uh, and in gsm 900 you're obviously limited to capacity and how many cars you can have um, in in a set number of uh, frequency channels um so they realized oh shit we're going to need more capacity so um they then um, sort of launched a second band, frequency band, and that was a GSM 1800. Now, some cellular providers just had um, frequency allocation in that band. Um, other providers obviously had uh, 900 and 1800 to spill over for you know capacity. Um, in the UK, um, Orange and Mercury One to One had these phones. Actually, this is just an Orange one. Mercury One to One obviously had the, their own variants of it. Um, which I actually have right here as well. This is um, a 2146. Some of you guys might recognize this. Um, so these are both uh, GSM 1800 single band um, and uh, they both take SIM cards. These are both digital and they can still be used today if you've got old style SIM cards. Um, and these were single band, which meant that you just could uh, use any GSM 1800 network. Now at the time, in 1995, that wasn't many because obviously GSM 1800 was only taken off. But a lot of people jumped on the GSM 1800 bandwagon because they realized there's a hell of a lot more capacity um, uh, for, for phone calls and stuff. There was no data at the time, you know, no, no internet, no data tariffs, nothing like that. So, um, and obviously um, this phone as well, this was GSM 1800. This was the very first uh, phone Orange launched. Um, and uh, in Germany, they had the same phone. They had uh, this E plus and E plus is the equivalent to Orange in Germany. Um, lots of lots of um, uh, different variants of this phone exist. Uh, there's a couple, I think, out of Asia as well. But anyway, um, so and then um, a few years down the line, obviously, um, America realized, shit, we need to get in on this GSM thing. So they launched GSM 1900, which was different to GSM 1800 because uh, it's obviously on two different frequencies and, you know, it just won't work. GSM 1900's here, GSM 1800's here. There's a 100 megahertz difference. It's like, you know, it's just not going to happen. So uh, they, they decided on GSM 1900 because I'm guessing there was something at the, at the 1800 frequency that they couldn't obviously move or shift around or, or whatever the case may be. I'm not too sure, but uh, they chose to go with GSM 1900 and, uh, uh, and that's that. And that's when they obviously launched things like this. Uh, this is a uh, Motorola Select 6000E. This will still work today. It takes a large credit card size SIM. I um, did a video about this, the 3000 and the 2000, uh, Select 2000 as well. Check out the, uh, the video about that um, about a year or so ago as well. I keep getting questions about these. Um, I don't have any more for sale at the moment of these. Um, they've all sold, unfortunately. So, um, and obviously the UK had uh, the, the equivalent um, GSM 900 and 1800. This is a dual band phone. That's a single band phone. Um, and then obviously um, Africa sort of joined suit. Asia followed um, uh, uh, real quick with, with, you know, the demand in Asia was, was quite high for phones. So a lot of them launched uh, GSM 1800 and then they realized, oh shit, we're going to run out of capacity again. So they launched something called 3G, which was on 2100 megahertz or 2.1 gigahertz as opposed to GSM 1800, which was on 1800 megahertz or 1.8 gigahertz. Um, and uh, that really, really increased the capacity for, for uh, you know, cellular traffic. Uh, and in the early days of 3G, there was a, a low bitrate data, which you could use to, to access, you know, real basic services. Uh, the Nokia 7110, I think at the time I had, was a, a 3G, uh, phone which had uh, no it wasn't it wasn't a 3g it had a gprs which ran over normal gsm but um 3g came sort of after that but um you could get internet over 3g and it, it opened the floodgates to to uh you know the, the 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 data revolution i suppose we have nowadays where there's i don't know how many petabytes a, a month um across the world get get loaded off um off cellular uh, um, it, it's something crazy. It, uh, in case you don't know, a petabyte is um, is like I think a thousand exabytes. 
which is like crazy. It's crazy. You have like megabytes, you have gigabytes, you have terabytes, um, and then you have like uh, uh, something else, and then you have like petabytes and tero um, and, and exabytes, and it, it's like it's crazy the amount of zeros that that, that number has. But anyway, um, so and then obviously much later um, they decided. Uh, okay, well, there's a demand for for data. Well, lots of demand for data. We need to we need to somehow find a way of of getting more data to the cellular user. So they obviously developed 4G, which is what's known as LTE as well in some countries, and that normally operates around the 2600 megahertz. I know some countries have actually got it on different frequencies, uh, primarily on 800 and and 2600. There are exceptions to the rule depending on you know which country you go. Uh, there is a lot of exceptions. A lot of countries have LTE on 1800. Uh, I've seen LTE even on, on 900 megahertz. Um, it it kind of depends. I think Russia might even have GSM on 450 megahertz or LTE on 450. Certainly a while back when I checked my list, they, they had some funny permutation which no one else in the world had. Um, so th there are obviously exceptions to the rules. Um, I think the last analog network to exist in the world was an amps network um, in the Dominican Republic because uh, I actually wanted to go out there um, and, and take out my elite my Motorola elite and um, and just get it activated for the two weeks I was out there I never got around to it unfortunately so uh, uh, that died a, that that idea died a death um, so currently we're at 4g now we're at we're LTE and they've already started developing 5g and they've started testing it already and the speeds are just astronomical I mean they're talking about like 300 megabits over cellular technology that's like faster than you know the fiber connections we have in the home so um, just to give you some idea of if, if you know what's what but generally now GSM um, uh, 900 or 2G and 3G works pretty much everywhere here and obviously uh, GSM 1900 as well as CDMA works pretty much here there are actually exceptions uh i mean if you're looking at generally you know there's iden which i think now is defunct because it used to be a push to talk service which actually i have a phone here and this was this was iden and i still use these for the push to talk function these were a real good phone this is a, a nextel i355 i think it is and they're like uh, radios but they're a phone as well real neat function this obviously you can't use these anymore to make calls you just use them as talkie walkies or walkie talkies if you're from america um and um so you had iden obviously you have cdma tdma tax radiocom 2000 was just available in france um i did a video of a couple of uh, couple of handsets um they had uh um, back in the day, um, I think also about six, seven months ago, check them out. Uh, Radiocom was primarily for car phones. Um, there is very, very few handheld devices that are, you know, this sort of size or, or you know, bricks that you can hold in your hand that are for Radiocom 2000. Um, I think 90, 90, 95% of the phones are actually um, car mounted or, or big transportable things. So, um, so. But anyway, just to, just to, just to sum up, really, um, um, I haven't put Australia on this because um, I heard that Australia are actually ditching um, all their 2G networks. So GSM 900 is going, GSM uh, 1800 is going. Um, that's not to say that there will probably be 3G on the same frequencies. Um, basically, if you have GSM 900. The way it works is it's a 2G network, it's a second generation network. So um, just the way the compression works, um, let me try and draw this actually. It's probably easier to draw it and just to, just to explain to you guys what I mean. So if you have, if you have a pipe like this, um, you've got a certain amount of data going through it. And there's only so much you can push. Now, if you squeeze that data you compress it you can get a lot more in there without it getting all mushed up together um, and the way 2g works is it's not compressed where it's very loosely compressed the way 3g works is it's it's got a lot more data throughput and again 4g the, the data throughput of that is significantly more so 
Um, basically, 3G was developed for data or data as well as phone calls. 4G was just developed for data because the demand for data is so great on cell phones that they just thought we have to somehow um, make a system that that you know that that caters for the, the increase in demand. But there are cellular providers now that actually use um, 4G for phone calls as well, um, as well as Wi-Fi calling and all sorts of other stuff. But um, what what basically it does? You got you got um, uh, 3G, which is um, in some countries it's 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 known as UMTS, um, and that can be HSDPA, which is just a kind of compression type thing, um, or HSUPA, I think it is. Uh, and again, these are different kind of technologies which come under the 3G bracket basically, um, and. If you've got 2G, you don't have a high throughput through a particular through a particular type of uh, frequency. If you if you got 3G, you can squeeze a lot more phone calls and a lot more data through the same kind of cable or through the same airwave space. Again, if you got 4G, the the technology and the compression and the way it works and the propagation through the air. I'm not going to bore you with the with the propagation properties because I mean that's science stuff, that's lab code technician type shit or mad scientist in a, in a, in a lab kind of shit. But um, you can squeeze a lot more in the same amount of uh, in the same amount of airspace than you could um, with three G or with two G than you can with with four G, which is why the the data speeds are so much greater. So um, it, it you know it it kind of kind of works better. So Australia's getting rid of their two G system, uh, which is basically GSM, and they're probably going to use that frequency band. To just have 3G on there, which basically boosts it, it like more than doubles the capacity for phone calls and traffic. Uh, basically, I know, I'm not too sure the the reason for. It. I'm only speculating here, but uh, th that's possibly what I think is is happening. So um, I, I purposely didn't draw Australia on here. I can do now, um, kind of like that, with the thingy down there. So. Um, I hear you, Australia. All the Australians watching me. There was a reason why I didn't draw it. Well, apologies, it is just a circle. My my doodle's appalling, but you guys you guys know. So the exception to the rule to most of what I've said is Japan. Uh, Japan has been renowned for being at the forefront of technology, and they kind of did their own thing. When America decided to go with amps, Europe decided to go with various smuggler's board of technologies. Um, Japan was kind of already in its own little bubble, and they just said, no, konnichiwa, we'll do something else. Uh, and, and I think, as far as I know, they had like really, really strange frequency bands like uh, 1700 megahertz and 700 megahertz and, and all sorts of weird permutations of technology. So they're kind of the exceptions. Uh, I think Korea had some exception to, to the frequency assignment and whatnot. Because um, uh, uh, certainly SoftBank and Docomo in, in Japan, those were the two main providers. Um, they kind of did their own thing away from from everyone else in, in the world. So, but anyway, um, I hope this wasn't too boring. I've tried to be as as kind of as 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 kind of clear cut and loose as as, as possible with the with the with the with the techie jargon. Um, I could go into a lot more detail, but I don't want this to be a brain dump and a, and a, or a brain freeze on anybody. Um, this is just a, a, just to give you guys an idea of, of all the different technologies, you know, uh, that that kind of operate and and you know what's been, what's what's here and what's sort of coming. I guess uh, more more what we've had than than what's obviously coming because I can't predict the future. But uh, I know definitely five G's coming because I, I read about it recently. So. Um, Normal service will be resumed next time. Um, I will definitely keep doing uh, phone videos. This is just an exception because a lot of people are saying, you know, do something because the Australians are getting rid of the 2G. Um, I kind of sort of thought, you know what, that's a good idea. Why don't I just explain how things work kind of thing. So, um, but anyway, um, I will just add one more thing to it. Um, and that is that out of all the all the analog stuff that exists there is obviously um, how should I do this A frequency band so there is kind of different frequencies and you got obviously 800 900 um, 1800 oh, it's not gonna fit but the, the, the generally as a general rule of thumb the, the older frequencies kind of worked 
kind of worked down here 450 megahertz 800 uh, because once you go above one gigahertz or a thousand megahertz the electronics inside the the, the phones um, they, they change quite greatly it, it, it once you hit that gigahertz mark the just the way the electronics has to work is quite different to say 450 um, the the lower the frequency the better the signal the service you get inside a building the further it propagates from the cell tower so if you got a, a nice little cell tower and you got your um, you got your um, your nice little micro tack there there you go with the nice little screen and the buttons uh, if you're if you're on 450 megahertz well you wouldn't have a micro tack you'd have something quite big with a big antenna uh, if you're on a micro tack you're probably going to be uh, on the 800 frequency band um, you could be a couple of miles away from the cell tower um, if you're on the 450 um, 450 megahertz which is real old school which actually the Scandinavians used uh, in their NMT a couple of other countries like Russia still, I think, have one 450 megahertz. Uh, I think Russia actually has CDMA 450. They've done some weird adaptation of the American system CDMA, but they've lowered the frequency that they don't need to have so many cell towers in, in loosely populated places. Um, so um, kind of kind of to cover the same area. You need less cell towers, basically, the lower frequency you have because they push out more power and the, the reach is further. The higher you go up in frequency, the more bandwidth or the more available capacity you have. But because it's a higher frequency, it doesn't penetrate as good through the building walls, through metal things. So if you're in a basement, you're not going to get 1800 unless you got a cell tower right outside. Whereas if you're on 450, you'd get service no problem in the basement. So 1800 doesn't travel as far, but you get a hell of a lot more bang for your buck in terms of capacity. Um, and that's kind of just the way it works, in, in it, loosely in a nutshell. Um, I, obviously, I can't tell you, you know, the, 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 the more technical details, but that's just the way it is. So anyway, I'm going to leave it at that because I know this is quite a long video. Uh, we're over half an hour mark. So if, you, if you're not asleep, um, thanks for watching. Give me the thumbs up. Uh, got any questions? I'll do my best to answer. Um, I, I'm not obviously a, a technical sort of expert on these things, but um, I, I got a keen interest and in, I've learned a lot obviously over the last 21 years of collecting cell phones. So um, drop me a comment and I will try and answer as best as I can. If I don't know the answer, I might know a guy who does because obviously I know a lot of cell phone collectors. I got a couple of ex-motor oil engineers as well. Um, so um, yeah, drop me a comment um, and that normal service will be resumed next time. If you found this boring, I apologize, um, but um, it's just a request I've had from numerous people to sort of do a bit of a tech talk. Uh, thanks for watching. Check out some of the other videos that I have uh, about phones, not about uh, doodles on papers and, and scribbles. Um, and I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching.